In this problem, what we're doing is finding all types of compositional functions and their domains. So first thing you want to do is identify what's the domain of both of these problems. So for f of x is x squared, that's quadratic, we know it's a polynomial. The domain of all polynomials is negative infinity to positive infinity. No gaps, no junks, no holes, no breaks in your graph. The next one, g of x though, is a radical function. So radicals, we have to make sure that we don't end up with zero, I'm sorry, you don't end up with negative numbers under your radical sign. So whatever you have under your radical sign, called your radicand, you set that greater than or equal to zero. So that means x has to be greater than or equal to two. So your domain for this next one is from two to positive infinity. Pick any number two or higher, you'll end up with a positive number under the radical and we're fine. So, the first part says we want to find f of g of x. So, since f comes first, that's going to be the first function that we write down. And what we're plugging in, we're substituting into this function g of x. So, everywhere there's an x, we're taking that out and we're replacing it with the square root of x minus 2. So once again, f came first, so we wrote that down first. And what you're doing is you're taking out the x and you're replacing it with the other function. So on the left-hand side, this is just notation telling you what we're doing. We found f of the square root of x minus 2. On the right-hand side, if we're simplifying the square root of x minus 2 squared, your square root and squaring are opposite operations, so they cancel each other out, and we're left with x minus 2. So whenever you're finding the domain of composition of functions, you have to pay attention to two different things. You have to pay attention to the function that you plugged in, its domain. So here's the domain of that one. And we have to pay attention to the domain of our final result. So the final result is linear. And that domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, we're fine. The domain here, though, is from 2 to positive infinity. So you have to pay attention to both of those. And that means for us that our domain for this function is going to be from 2 to positive infinity. Once again, you have to pay attention to the domain of what you plugged in and the domain of the result, and you're taking the combination of those. So this one says take everything. This says take from 2 and up. So we have to take what's going to work for both, and only 2 and up works for both. So for the next problem, we're still working with the same functions. f of x is still x squared, and g of x is still the square root of x minus 2. But now we're finding a reverse. We're finding g of f at x. So whatever letter comes first, that's what we write down first. So g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 2. And what we're substituting in is the second function. So everywhere there's an x, we're going to take it out. And we're replacing it with x squared. So from here, there's nothing that we can do to simplify this because you have the minus sign. So what we have to do is once again now tell what our domain is. So our domain is, we have to make sure to pay attention to the function of what we plugged in. So we plugged in x squared, which is fine. It's quadratic. All quadratic equations are polynomials. Polynomials, your domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. But here is the issue. We have to pay attention to the final result as well. So the final result has a radical in it. We have to make sure that whatever is under our radical sign is greater than or equal to zero. So I think we talked about this problem in class because we skipped over this section. But what I told you in class was to go to your graphing calculator and you're going to graph this exact problem. So with your graphing calculator, where you find that inequality sign, you go under math. I'm sorry, it's right above math. It's the test menu. So you got to press second in math and you'll get your inequality sign. 
So what you'll see there, the only thing your calculator is going to show you is going to be the result where x squared minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. And I'm graphing it right now just so I can get the graph right for you. So what your calculator is going to show you, and we're going to come back to this section. It's section 1.6, I believe, in your book, or 1.7. Your calculator looks something like this. So it only shows you where your graph is greater than or equal to 0. So what you had to do in order to find these points was to solve this problem. So we have x squared is equal to 2. And once again, the reason we're doing that is we're finding these endpoints. Where do these bars stop? Where is the endpoints of where our graph is greater than or equal to 0? So opposite of squaring, we take the square root. So x is equal to plus or minus square root of 2. So our domain for this graph is from negative infinity, because remember this graph is continuing to go to the left, up till negative square root of 2. Then you have a gap in it, so we have union, positive square root of 2, that represents this point, over to positive infinity. And the reason you have to do this problem differently is because you have a squared term under that radical. And once again, when we get to section 1.6, we're going to cover this in depth. But for right now, what you can do is go to y equals in your graphing calculator, and you're going to type in this inequality directly. The way you get that inequality sign is you need the test menu, and your test menu is under the math button. So the third problem, the third problem what you wanted to do was find, uh, what did you want to find? f of f. So whatever function comes first, you write that down first. We had x squared. And what we're substituting into this is x squared. So take that x out and replace it with x squared. And here you multiply those exponents together. Since your result is a polynomial, your domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And with the last problem, you're finding g of g. So g comes first, we write that down first, square root of x minus 2. And what you're substituting into that is the square root of x minus 2. So you are taking this value of x out and you're replacing it with the square root of x minus 2. And then what you still have left in the problem is square root of that term minus 2. And you can't simplify that any further, so you just leave that in there. Now the question is, what's your domain? So remember, composition of functions, when you're trying to figure out your domain, you have to pay attention to the value that you plugged in. So our domain here is 2 to positive infinity. You also have to pay attention to the domain of your final answer. So same process, whatever is under your radical sign, you have to set that greater than or equal to zero. So for this particular problem, and I'm going to make some space up top. Now what you have is the square root of x minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 2. The opposite of square root is squaring, so we're going to square both sides to get 4. And then the opposite of subtracting 2, we're going to add 2 on both sides. So we get x is greater than or equal to 6. So we have 6 to positive infinity. So now your question is, we plugged in this, and our domain is this. Our final result is this, and the domain of that is from 6 to positive infinity. So which one is your result? So remember with these domains, it what's is it is what works for both. So from the first one, it works from 2 all over to positive infinity. For the second, your final result 
and that's two, three, four, five, six. It works from six all the way to positive infinity. So if you're looking at the graphs, we're looking for where it overlaps. The graphs overlap from six to positive infinity. So that's your domain. Sorry for such a long video. Feels like you're in class, huh? <laughs> Made with DoodleCast Pro.